All right, folks, God bless you. Okay, guys, let's see. Uh, okay. All right. The, the message today is so beyond the... It's, it's literally, it's beyond my brain. It's beyond my, almost my ability to sit here and comprehend what's happened. Um, the communication of the end of the world, the communication of the entire ministry, the way the Lord did it. It's like something, it's like a book in the Bible. It's, it's like reading one of these Bible books that's so supernatural that you're like, what? He got swallowed by a fish and then he got burped up at Nineveh? No way. Okay, it's kind of the same type. It's so impossible. It's so insane that I'm trying to process what happened today. And so I have the folder. I'm going to tell you where I'm at. Uh, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to give you a little bit of, so I told you I'd be here. I'm not going to leave you hanging, but it's going to take me the next five to 10 hours sitting at a computer, cross-referencing what's happened, bringing it into the story today, lining up the folder and all the supernatural communications, confirmations, you know, like the rock and Chinati like the LZ in Chinati, like the building in Chinati that was split in half made of rocks, you know, like we're all being built up like living stones into a holy temple for God to occupy. There are so many supernatural cross-references and in, in things that happened, I almost don't know what to do with it. It's I'm not joking. It's, it's that far over the top. So I'm going to prove it to you right now. I'll, I'll let you... So I'll, I'll, I'll let you know where, where I am. Uh, I, I already took this step of faith and I came here. He proved to me, this is where I was supposed to be. He proved to me today with the event that happened today. I thought I was probably going to be skydiving here. I'll probably still be skydiving in the course of this rest of the trip I have to take. But this was the goal. This was the event. This was the communication I'm not saying that there's not more, but what was communicated today is so definitive and it's so impossible and it's so over the top that there's no way to deny that it was the Lord setting the entire thing up. Okay, several weeks before uh, the little Naz video, let me show you something. Let's let's do a, a Google or let's do a YouTube uh, little Naz. Little Nas, I think it's Montero, right? Okay, this one, this little Nas video, it's like, hang on one sec. Okay, so I'm just going to do a quick reminder. Weeks before this video was out, I told everybody that the Lord had communicated to me I had to go somewhere. And he was sending me on a mission and he had even confirmed to me that I had to go and he had confirmed it. And, uh, oh, do we have a glitch in the, here we go. Sorry, I'm a little worried about my program. So here we go anyway. So he had confirmed it and I, and he, had, and I'm going to go over this testimony, but I need an entire day to prepare for y'all what I have to deliver. It's beyond my brain. It's beyond it. So anyway, I'm processing it all, what happened today. That in conjunction with the entire trip, what's already been documented. That with, I told you, the dream that I had. Uh, that's uh, the recording. I proved I had a recording. That'll come into play tomorrow. It's all going to come into play. But today, <clears throat> he put it all together for me in a way that incorporates everything I've shown you in a way that's so insane. I'll just tell you, it's insane. It's I don't even know what to do with it. It's so mind-boggling. So let me let me just tell you, first of all, where I'm at. The Lord told me I had to go to a place called Kill Devil Hills. 
Now, I don't know if you guys know what I, I had no idea what Kill Devil Hills was. Um, a couple months ago, just I was doing something I don't remember, and I was praying, and I heard the Lord tell me, I want you to go to Kill Devil Hills. It was in the process of trying to resolve a problem I was having that was going on at that particular time. And the Lord told me, I, I want you to go to Kill Devil Hills. I've only heard of Kill Devil Hills one time in my life. One time. Right after I got saved. Right after I got saved, I, a couple of weeks after I was saved and I was manifesting this supernatural spiritual gift that I was trying to just understand... I was hoping I hadn't like lost my mind because I had this ability to see, you know, all this stuff that I show you The the virgin is a dead sheep. I mean, can you imagine if you're all of a sudden you can see a world that you were never able to see and it was just turned on like a button and you're like, what's going on? Like why, why it, you, I walked into Walmart and I just started laughing. I was like, Oh my God. Because I could see everything as it truly was. And it, I just, it was like Roddy Piper when he's in the store and he looks up at the TV in the movie They Live and he goes, I'll, I'll show you the scene. Hang on, let me show you the scene. Okay, so, and okay guys, now seriously, you have to take a moment and you just have to take a moment and pretend you're me. I got saved in, in such a supernatural way in an alley. I was arrested by all these cops the night I got saved because I could see and I could tell the police were something different. They weren't what I was. I was like, they, they were like a group of insects and I was like aliens. And I was like, what the hell is going on the night I got saved? My, I was like waking up in a horror movie. That's what it was like. And so anyway, after the first night I got saved, within within a within a a week or so after I was released, because they arrested me for nothing, and they had to release me. And once I got out, I was at the Marriott Courtyard in San Antonio. I went to Walmart and I walked in, and I I could see everything, and it, I was just like, "What in the hell?" And I just I could see everything as it was. All the stuff I show you on logos and, you know, the virgin's really a dead sheep. Arby's is a penis and a dead sheep. Can you imagine waking up to that? I thought maybe I'd lost my mind or something. I was like, and I just started laughing. Let me show you a scene in, in They Live that is exactly what it was like for me right here. There are no limits. <laughs> it figures it would be something like this. Our nation, our ideals. <sighs> Of Excuse me. Just survive. You know, you look succeed. like your head fell on the cheese dip back in 1957. <gasps> you, you're okay. This one, real fucking ugly. Oh. You see, I take these glasses off. She looks like a regular person, doesn't she, huh? Put them back on. From Maldehyde face. That's what That's we got. That's enough out of you. <laughs> You get out or I call the cops. Call the cops? You know what you need? You need a Brazilian plastic surgeon. Okay, I wanted you to see that just for a sec so you understand. Can you imagine what in the movie when he puts those on and he wakes up and there's another race of beans there? That's what happened to me. The night I was saved, I knew there was another race of beans here. I was arrested by them. There was this nighttime force of police they turned lights on all around Travis Park, and I was like, what in the hell is going on? Well, when I walked into Walmart and I could see, I started laughing. I was like, oh, you got to be freaking kidding me. I was like, you know, just like him, it figures it would be something like this. Well, back when that happened, I was in Walmart, and there's this giant box. Uh, you know how they have the boxes at Walmart with stuffed animals? Sometimes they'll have something that's in a big box and they'll have, you know, big stuffed animals or something. They had a box and it was all globes, globes, you know, like a globe of the earth. And it had all these countries, all the, you know, all the countries on it. And I heard the Lord, like I was hearing the Lord's voice the night I got saved. Michael told me, Jonathan, learn to trust that little voice. 
That's God speaking to you now. The Bible says, my sheep hear my voice. The night I got saved, Michael told me, Jonathan, that little voice you hear now is God speaking to you. Learn to trust his voice. Why do you think I'm here where I'm at? Because I trust the Lord and I, I heard his voice and I, I obey when he tells me to do something. Grand Junction, Chinati, uh, Vatican information, all the information I've given you is because I've been obedient to what he tells me to do. Okay. When I looked at that globe, folks, I picked up this globe and I started looking at it. There were in the watermarks, I was like, why is there a snake going all around the entire globe like this? It would go like this and then like this and then like this. And you could see the body, but then it would have a watermark of a snake's head. And then the body would continue and then another watermark of the snake's head. So as a snake would go, there the head would be, then the body would continue, the head would be. And it would, went all around the globe. And I was like, what the hell is going on? And I, and I was looking at it and I was trying to find a place on the globe where the serpent was not. And there was only one place on the globe. You know where it was? The New Hebride Islands, the Loyalty Islands. I'll never forget it. I was like, wow. This is the only place it's not. And there there was an island, it said Vanuatu. And then there was a star, and it said Espiritu Santo, which means the Holy Spirit. That was a couple weeks after I got saved. I had no idea. I had no idea that the Lord was communicating, you know, that the only place the serpent is not in the whole globe is where there's the Holy Spirit. I didn't understand that till years later. But I saw it on a globe. There was literally a snake going all around the globe. And the only place on that globe where I didn't really see the serpent was the Loyalty Islands, the New Hebrides. Vanuatu, and I saw the uh, a star, and it said Espiritu Santo, which means the Holy Spirit. Well, when I left there, I went and I pulled up a map and I was going to map my way to New York because I felt like I, I had this unquenchable desire to go to New York. And I didn't know why from the night I got saved. Well, New York is going to be the flashpoint. New York's called the Big Apple. Think of how they use the Apple, Apple computers with the bite taken out of it. New York, the Big Apple. It's a representation of all the evil that goes on in the world from the fall. All the licentious, lascivious uh, just evilness that happens in New York is absurd. I've seen some of it. I've been there. So anyway, when I looked at this map in 2002, weeks after I got saved, after I'd seen that globe, the globe prompted me to go look at the map. Like, why was this on the globe? And then I went and looked at this map to go to New York. And my eyes went to one place on the route. Kill Devil Hills. That's the only time I've seen Kill Devil Hills in my life ever. A few months ago, the Lord told me, I want you to go to Kill Devil Hills. I was like, you want me to go to where? Kill Devil Hills? You mean the place I saw on the map right after I got saved? It was on the route to New York. If I was going to go to New York for whatever reason I felt like I needed to go to New York, which I never did. But the bombings that are on the U.S. currency are New York. The tidal wave and the nuke, that's New York. That's on the U.S. currency. I never went to New York. The Lord never sent me to New York. I thought one time on the when I went to This Is It, I thought the Lord was telling me, like he said, start driving towards New York right now. And I ended up at This Is It. This Is It. Think about that. By a bizarre, if y'all know that this is it testimony, I'm not going to go over it. It's impossible. He told me to wear all black, tell Lou to wear all black. And I ended up in a place called This Is It where everybody was black. And I walked in with Lou and we're wearing all black. And everybody looked at us like, what are these white people doing here? And we walked in and this guy was going, praise God, hallelujah, praise God. And the name of the band was called For the Lord. And it was Soul Food in Houston. That was my first act of obedience was listening to the Lord say, get in the car, start driving towards New York now. And I ended it up, up, up at this is it. And after that, he said, now go back home. And I did what he said. It was to show me that I could hear his voice. I was obedient 
and he was letting me know that this is it. I knew in 2002 that this is it. This is what? This is the end of the world. In the past 24 hours, he's proved it. This is it. Everything I've understood, everything he's communicated to me, the understanding of the Statue of Liberty in the transmutation circle and that a, uh, an angel is represented by a five-pointed star. And when you turn a five-pointed star upside down, it's transmuted into the synagogue of Satan, the church of Satan. These concepts that are unsearchable, the Lord has revealed them all to me. I can prove it. I, the Lord's let me prove it already. But today, he did something today that solidified the deal so hard and so mo in, in a way that as a servant of the Most High, it's like having your boss say, you've done a fine job, you've done an excellent job, here's proof. That's what happened today. That's what happened. I thought I would be skydiving in somewhere here. I'm in a place called Kill Devil Hills. That's where I'm at. I won't be here long because I've already received what I was supposed to receive from coming here. It's already happened. Now I've got more of my route. I still have about 10 days of route left on my journey. I'm sure plenty is going to happen. However, what I'm going to show you, what I'm going to communicate to you, what I'm going to share with you, is so supernatural, it goes back to the the very weeks of when I first got saved. It goes from then all the way till now. It spans 20 years. And it's a personal message from the Lord to let me know you did it. And now, if y'all if if don't believe me, do this. This will prove it right now. Just do this. Go look at the video I did the other night. Let's see. I'll pull it up. The video I did the other night, the video I did the other night, it has um, a comment. It's uh, somebody who I know. Uh, well, when I say I know, I've I've talked to a few times. I've, I've reached out to help them out. They're from a foreign country and, and um, they moved here and I've done a little bit to try and help. But I know this person. I've ne I've never talked to him in person, but I know them through uh, you know the ministry. But the other night, uh, a guy named Eric left a comment. He and I, I saw his comment the other night after I did the video, and he said everything you're saying reminds me of Hebrews 11. Let me see if I can find it real quick. I'll pause my my thing and I'll find it real quick. Yeah, here it is. So it says you should call this video Hebrews 11. You just kind of went over by faith. Okay. This and this happened. The containers, Chinati, Eden, all the things I've done. And he's right. I've actually made a joke before comparing to everything the Lord's had me do by faith. I'm like, by faith, you know, I, I opened the door in the back of the hotel. I opened that door by faith. I knew I was probably going to get killed if I opened it. I, I opened it by faith and I, I, I took my drive towards New York by faith because I heard the Lord tell me go start driving towards New York. And then I said, could you confirm that please? And I walked over to my closet in the hotel and I opened up uh, where my clothes were and I had a brand new leather jacket that I'd brought over. I had never even worn it. And I pushed all the clothes back and I opened up the jacket and on the whole inside of the jacket, it said New York. I mean this big. And the inside of the back of the leather jacket said New York. And I went, okay, I got to go that direction. He said, drive towards New York. And on that drive, I ended up at a place called This Is It. What about Amy's ice cream on the radio, on air? So I've done all these things by faith. I saw this comment yesterday, this comment right here. You should call this video Hebrews 11. Let me show you Hebrews 11 right here. So let's go to the Bible, Hebrews 11. Because what I have to show you guys today is is so unbelievable. Well, when I say today, it's going to take me uh it's going to take me 10 hours of just working on on putting this together for you because of all the uh all the stuff that's happened. It's 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 not even it's almost incomprehensible what happened today. 
but I documented it, so I'll be able to deliver it for sure. So here we go. Hebrews, there we go. Hebrews 11. Okay, so here we go. That's weird. It should be going to Hebrews 11. Hebrews. That's so weird. Hang on. Okay, so here we go. Let me show you some. Now by faith, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that was right that was righteous. God testifying of his gifts, and by it, he being dead, yet speaketh. By faith, Enoch was translated, that he should not see death, and was not found, because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony, that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. The word diligently means to crave, to search out, to investigate, demand, worship, seek after. Those that diligently seek him. For he, uh, And he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things as yet not seen, moved with fear and prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by which he condemned the world and became the heir of righteousness. Okay. Became the heir of righteousness. Let me uh, see if I can get this thing to quit moving. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place where he should have to receive for an inheritance, obeyed and he went out, not knowing whither he went. So, Myself, I, I didn't know why God was telling me to convert a shipping container, why he was telling me to put certain things in it. He told me just do it, and then it ended up going to the corner of Rainbow and Casimir. But he told me to put another one in its place. While the one was being removed by a crane, another one was being set down. And I thought that was just to be nice, so it didn't leave a big hole in the in the building uh, of the, the building plan where I was at. So it didn't look all barren, like someone had just come and moved something out of the way because it went in with the whole structure. Anyway, so I put another one there. He had me convert that one by faith. I said, okay, I'll do it. Y'all y'all might know the testimony when the Lord told me to go down. I was like, Lord, what am I supposed to do with this container? And he told me I wanted to go to Grand Junction with the other one. That's when I had to go deal with city planning in Grand Junction. And then I had done all this work and I said, I don't even know that what's inside it is correct. And the Lord told me, go down to the alley. I'll talk to you in the morning. I went down to the alley where I got saved and I prayed. I, it was crickets. I heard nothing. I thought something was wrong. And I was like, okay, well, I came down here. This is where I am. This is what, this is what you told me to do. Nothing. Okay, well, I'm going to go home. I guess maybe I've just... I guess I'm just not hearing from you, I guess. And I, I was driving home. I was going to get on the highway, take a left. But I just kept driving straight down Broadway. And as I drove down Broadway, there was a little book. It looked like a dove's wings up in the uh, that had been smushed on the ground. It looked like white wings sticking up in the air. And as I got closer, I was like, that's some kind of a little book. And I heard the Lord. I drove right on top of it. I didn't run over it with my wheels. It went directly under the center of my truck. And I heard the Lord say, go back and get that book. I, and I said, I could see it in the rearview mirror. I said, Lord, if I go back and get it and there's nothing in it, I'm going to freak out. Go get the book. Sorry, I was getting hot. He said, go get the book. So I made a Yui. I went and I picked up the book in the middle of the street. I opened. It was a little Bible track book. Y'all may know the testimony. I opened it up. And when I opened it up, 
in that little book was everything I'd been praying about that did I get the container right? What I had put in the container was literally in that little book on the street. And the Lord told me, go in the morning and I'll talk to you. And I was like, okay. And I went early in the morning. I didn't hear anything. And then I went home kind of like a spoiled little kid that I was all pissed off. And I was driving home. But instead of going the way home, I'd normally go getting on the highway. I went straight down Broadway. And I was right by Incarnate Word High School. I had Incarnate Word College. And that book was in the middle of the road. The Lord said, go back and get it. And when I opened it up, inside that little pamphlet on a Sunday morning was pretty much everything that was in that shipping container, scriptures and all. And I, I was like, <gasps> and I was so grateful because, yeah, I mean, my faith was on the line right there. And then that was Sunday. Monday morning, I went to my P.O. box, and it was one of those little Bible track books. The identical Bible track book was in my P.O. box. The identical one that was in the middle of the street. Do you know what the odds of that are? That's one in a hundred trillion. How in the world do you have a little Bible track book that's in your P.O. box? That means when I picked up the, the little thing on Sunday, the one that was in the middle of the street, someone had dropped or it got there somehow. There was already the same little book in my P.O. box. So he confirmed everything that you put in those shipping containers is right. So anyway, without going into all these right now, because right now I'm freaking out. The Lord just confirmed my entire ministry from beginning to end. You know what the title of yesterday's uh, video was? Don't forget. Remember, this was yes. This was left 14 hours ago. This, this, this was left 14 hours ago. This was left 14 hours ago, right there. Okay, well, today, I documented everything. It's already in a folder. I already sent it to Dave. I already freaked out. It's already proven, but now I have to deliver it to you. And I'm like, this is so beyond people's brains. This is like, this is like a biblical story, guys. It's... It's beyond supernatural. It's beyond supernatural. So all these things that have happened, the, the title was, I have arrived at my destination. The end must be coming soon. When I wrote that yesterday, today's miracles had not happened. When I did that video, what happened today had not even happened yet. Today proves that that title is correct. Today, what happened today proves that I've arrived in my destination, literally in my entire ministry, from beginning to end. And when I say end, what I mean is, is it the end, like does everything end tomorrow? What I mean is, the Lord has confirmed everything I've shown you from the beginning to today, it proves it. Today proves it, all of it, in a way that I I almost can't comprehend. It's like picking up two rocks in, in a riverbed in the desert, eight hours from where I live, amongst hundreds of trillions of rocks. And somehow I picked up two that were the same rock, just split in half. Something that profound happened today. And I've documented it. And it's in the folders. And so I'm in Kill Devil Hills. The only time I've ever even seen Kill Devil Hills was about two weeks after I got saved. Uh, I think right before I went to This Is It. Right before I went to This Is It. I thought Kill Devil Hills would have been on the way to go to the route I was going to take to go to New York. That's the only time I've ever seen Kill Devil Hills anywhere or even heard of it. That's where I am right now. I'm in Kill Devil Hills. Do you know why? Because everything I showed you was laying Satan's kingdoms bare. The only way to get out of here is you kill the devil inside of you. The only way you kill the devil inside of you is you get born again. When you get born again, you cut, you cut that Bluetooth line to the pit. You get inverted. The two become one. You killed the devil inside of you. And that's what the Lord used me to do to help everybody kill the devil inside of them. And I can prove it. And today's event proves it. Anyone that called me a false prophet, 
is in so much deep shit. They're in so much deep shit. Sorry, y'all are in deep, 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 deep shit. It doesn't get any deeper. I'm sorry. It's true, though. So, it's all in the folder. The Lord had communicated to me before the little Naz video, he wanted me to go to Kill Devil Hills. I had already told y'all, you can go find videos where I said the Lord's communicated to me that I have to go take another step of faith and I, he's sending me somewhere. I couldn't talk about it yet. He told me I couldn't reveal it until it was time. I asked the Lord, look, could you help me? Can you prove, and not prove, but can you confirm that that's where you want me to go. You want me to go to kill Devil's Hills. And he told me also to get rid of my Royal Enfield motorcycle. And I was like, you want me to, it was time to get rid of it. And I was like, well, I thought I'd just go trade it for like a used Yamaha or something. And I, I, but I didn't want to do anything disobedient either. And I said, well, you're the one that got me the motorcycle and it's a Royal Enfield. And it, it had its own message for Chinati. We are the Royal Enfield, like Zion. We're the Royal Enfield. Everything else is out. We're the Royal Enfield. And that's why he used even a motorcycle to help communicate a message to me. So when I when it was time, he told me, you know, to, I could get rid of the Royal Enfield. I didn't know what to do. And I was like, well, I guess maybe I'll just go trade it for this Yamaha. This guy I know has a, a dealership and I could have done an even trade. And uh, I went out. To, I, I was pulling out of my driveway and I said, Lord, I don't want to go do anything you don't want me to do. I don't want to get rid of this motorcycle that was a spiritual, you know, communication to me, unless I know it's you. I was pulling out of my driveway and my mailbox was open. It was on Friday. My mailbox was open. And when I pulled out, I thought, don't be lazy. Shut your mailbox, Johnny. So I got out of the truck and I walked over and there's a letter and then I pulled it out. You know what it was? It was a letter from Royal Enfield. Random. And I opened it up and it, you, you know what it said? Your Royal Enfield, Royal Enfield is sending you a recall notice for your safety. For your safety. We are sending you a recall notice like the Lord's telling me it's time to come back in. Not just a motorcycle for the Royal Enfield to come back in. Do you know why there's a band called Alice in Chains? Do you know what Alice means? Alice means of royalty, nobility in chains because we are the royal infield and we went out and we're in chains do you understand so when the lord when i opened that mailbox this is months ago and i was literally on my way to go look at this r1 that it was an old you know 10 year old used r1 that this guy jason had at the motorcycle shop and he had he had shown it to me and i was like wow it's really in perfect condition and i could have done an even trade and when I pulled out, I didn't want to do anything wrong. I didn't want to get rid of a royal infield that the Lord gave me. And it said, your royal infield, for your protection, your royal infield is being recalled to call back in. And I was like, that's crazy. So I went over there to get that R1. Guess what? The R1 was gone. It was gone. And I was like, okay, weird. As soon as I walked in the shop, Jason goes, hey, man, I'm sorry, Johnny. I sold it. I'm like, oh, it's cool. That's the Lord didn't want me to have it. And right then the Lord told me, go over to where you got your trailer for your bike, which was a Triumph dealer. I ended up with a Triumph instead. I'm on a Triumph at the place where I literally can hold my hands in victory and say, I've triumphed over the enemy. It's when y'all see all the details that are involved in this, you're not even going to believe it. You won't believe the details. You know, you've heard the term, the devil's in the details. The Lord God is in the details. The devil stole that from the Lord God. So now let me just kind of continue a little bit. So the Lord had communicated to me when I got rid of the Royal Enfield and I, I ended up on a, this triumph. You're going to kill Devil Hills with your triumph. I was like, that is so weird. Well, I was going to, to Chinati Chichinati, which is like the Garden of Eden with the Royal Enfield. Think about that. 
And now I'm going to kill Devil Hills with a triumph. I was like, that's just so random. Like I said, God is in the details. When y'all see the details, you won't even believe what you're going to see. Now, after the Lord did that, I said, okay, well, I prayed and I said, if you, if you really want me to do this, you'll let me know. And then there is a letter that very day in my mailbox that says your Royal Enfield for your safety is being called back in. The Royal Enfield has a recall for your bike. That's impossible. The day I was going to look at the Shamaha that ended up being gone, that I ended up on a triumph. It killed Devil Hills. Just wait. Okay, well, after that, I was like, okay, it looks like I'm going to kill Devil Hills. Well, I still wasn't totally convinced, even though I should have been. And I said, Lord, you know what? You know, you know it would be awesome. If somehow you could just show me the devil get killed. <laughs> That's what I said. I said, you know, it'd be really cool. As if somehow you, I could just see the devil getting killed. Because you want me to go to kill Devil Hills? I mean, you know, it'd be kind of cool. Just as a confirmation. If I could see the devil get killed just to confirm it. You know, that would be, you know, a good way for me to really believe. That's where I'm going on faith. Within two days, I got a text message from a friend of mine named Kay. He used to call in on the radio program sometime from New York, him and his sister, Nikki. And uh, Kay says, Jay, you got, Jay, you got to look at this little Nas video. They are so in your face. And so he's the one that sent me the little Nas video. Here's a little Nas video. Let's see. Where is it? Here's a little Nas video called Montero. It's like... Uh, it's like a Garden of Eden thing. And then in the little Naz video, when the door to hell opens up, by the way, which is very euphemistically a vagina, and then he goes in, he goes in, and he, he does his filthy stuff with the devil, and then he walks up behind the devil, and let me show you what happens. And he kills the devil right there and takes his crown. That happened two days after I told the Lord, it would be really cool if you'd let me see the devil get killed so I know I'm going to the right place. That's how he did it. Kay sent me the little Naz video. And I got to see the devil get killed. And then I said, I have to go now. I have to. I have to go to kill Devil Hills. And here I am. And now, because I came to kill Devil Hills, the Lord has manifested and he's upheld that everything he's taught me and shown me in my ministry is perfect. All the information I've given you has just been, here's the stamp of the Lord God on all of it. It's done. So anyway, I've been sitting here just trying to contemplate how in the world do I deliver to these guys <laughs> all this insane data? You know, it's like the two rocks from Chinati. It's like the building in Chinati that was split in half, made up of big stones. The Bible says you are all being built up as living stones into a holy temple for God to occupy. Can you imagine I was in a little building like in the Garden of Eden? I was in a, a, a Eden-like setting, an oasis in the middle of the desert. Everything was green, natural springs, beautiful grass, beautiful trees. And then within a few, within a hundred yards, everything was desert, sand, cactus, snakes. It was unbelievable. Yeah. And my building made out of solid rocks was split in half representing us. That building, that temple made from living stones got split in half because of the, the fall. What was on my porch, 1937, lust and desire. See, everything about everywhere I go is so supernatural, it's almost hard to communicate it all. But the Lord's let me do a pretty good job, I think. You're looking at the devil getting killed right there in a little Naz video. I'll show it to you again, just in case. You... There it is. He kills the devil. See, right there. He kills the devil. He goes up behind him, and he snaps his neck. And then he takes off his hair. 
Okay, it's funny he has the, the horns made of braided hair, like, you know, because there's the male-female thing. Anyway, so now I'm in Kill Devil Hills. And today, today, after I did the video yesterday that said, I'm here, let me, you know, I, in the video I said, let me uh, do what I got to do, see where I'm supposed to go. I thought I was probably going to be skydiving into here, but man, the Lord took control and he made things happen his way. I'm probably still going to be skydiving somewhere on this trip, but this thing today was the Lord confirming my entire ministry. It's done. It's, it's all perfect. That which was unsearchable has been searched out. Here's what's unsearchable. We're angels. We get trapped in a system called the host body. Angels are good. Demons are bad. So angel, an angel and a demon gets trapped in a host body. We self-cannibalize. That's Cain and Abel. That's why it's, the first two kids were Cain and Abel. It's a twin system. You have one good eye. You have one bad eye. The good eye goes up to heaven. The bad eye goes down to the pit. The flesh itself is inherently evil. And it's run by the, the you know, goddess of duality of uh, Thamuel or the devil. The goddess of duality. She runs the host body system with the devil, Satan. I use Thamuel because that's the way they refer to it. So the host body itself is evil. The flesh is in opposition to the spirit of the living God. So if you're in the flesh, you can't please God. You're naturally his enemy. You're a child of wrath. The only way to get out of the deal is you have to be converted. You have to be turned up. Your other eye has to become single. You have to have two eyes that are up. Not one up, one down. You have to have both eyes up. That shows you've been converted. And you've received Christ. That's a manifestation of your conversion. He's come to give sight to the blind. We're all blind. But then when you get converted, you can see. Now you can see that the virgin is a dead sheep. You can see now. Do you get it? You'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. Okay, so we have an angel and a demon. We are a superhuman angel, demon, spirit until we get converted. Once we get converted, we're the Holy Spirit. Once we have the Holy Spirit, we can hear from God and we can follow God. Until we get con until we get converted, we are at just the mercy of the wind, blow at the the angel of the bottomless pit, doing whatever he wants to you. Until you reach out to God, make your confession, confess your sins, admit you're a rebel, you deserve your punishment, and ask for forgiveness. Once that happens, once you get converted, the line, the Bluetooth line to the pit that keeps the record against you, which is a cell, like, and there is an insect, there is a bug, there is a worm in a cell that's feeding off you your entire life. That Bluetooth line that goes down to the pit is to feed that bug. When you die, if you die in this position, your soul goes to that cell. You are consumed by the pit. Satan and his minions, his army of locusts, consume you. What's who's saying the who's the king in the pit? Satan, Apollyon, Abaddon. He's the king of what? The locusts from the pit. So naturally, when you have your own cell and you die, you go to that locust. It consumes you. It transforms you. It transmutes you into one of them. That's why the statue of Liberty is standing on top of 11 point star called a hendecagram. And that Statue of Liberty has what's called a transmutation circle in the middle with a five pointed star that represents you because we're angels and we're represented by a five pointed star. And when you turn that five pointed star upside down, it becomes the Church of Satan, the sigil of Baphomet. Absolute methodology exposed. The Lord has let me expose their methodology methodology the method in which they do it the way they did it so he let me in search out what was unsearchable by diligently constantly going after the enemy and their information constantly relentlessly hunting down the enemy's information and becoming as wise as a serpent and learning their ways learning what they do learning their symbology learning the way they do things and then using it all against them to kill the devil. And I'm in kill devil hills now. And today he proved. That what he's let me do. Killed the devil. Now. Am I saying the devil's dead? No. The devil's alive in every other person that hasn't had the devil. Killed inside of them. That's all there is to it.
because he's taken over the host body system and the end of the world is Satan's rule on earth. So he's going to take over the whole host body system. But what the Lord has shown me is what kills the devil inside of anyone. You'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. You will know the Jesus. Jesus is the truth. There's only one way to know him. There's only one way and I was right. And the Lord proved it today. Guaranteed. So, what I'd like to do is, I want to show you the folder right now. But I'm afraid that if I show you the folder, and I and y'all start looking at it, everybody starts making their own conclusion. Oh, it's going to be this. Don't do it. You will never figure out, ever, without the testimony coming from me of what each picture is and what it represents It'll send you over the edge. Trust me when I tell you, it's already documented. It's already ready for you. I just have to put it in order and I have to put it with the stuff from the past. I see, I told you this, here it is. I told you this, here it is. Remember this, here it is. And put it all together for you in a deliverable way so you can receive it. And you can sit there and just go, oh my God, it's the end of the world and Johnny is like Noah. Johnny's just like one of the patriarchs in the Bible. He proved it to me today. Absolutely proved it. So, first of all, and also, I want to thank everybody that already stepped up to help the ark. Um, do I know when the end of the world is? I mean, uh, sort of, we're in the process right now. You know, Noah had to build an ark, right? Did he know when the rain was coming? Sort of. He knew it was coming. He knew he would see it. Otherwise, what's he building the ark for? It's no different than for me. Is the end of the world coming? Absolutely. Do I know exactly when? No. Am I sure it's coming pretty quickly? Guaranteed. What does pretty quickly mean? Uh, pretty darn quick. I have. If you're not saved today, I would seek out the Lord God with my entire heart immediately. Because all that's left for this world, the world's over. It's a done deal. It's already done. We're just waiting to watch it all happen. And it's happening right now. If you can't see it happening, you're blind. You're part of it. It's your home. See, just like Abraham, he went out in search of a home, believing God, looking for this other place, a, a city made without hands. See, I can see that city now. I know it's there. Because I went out and I sought it out on faith. And today what he did was the most personal message I could ever hope for. And it just, I'm done. I mean, I can hold my hands in the air and say, I accomplished that which the Lord purposed me for. That's, that's huge. It's been 20 years of doing this. So I'm going to take a deep breath. <laughs> I'm going to sit here and try and realize that, wow, there's, you know, like I said, I still have, I still have many more days on my route. And I told you I had other places to go that he was sending me, but this was the spot that I had to go to. And it's been proven now. I'll see what comes next. But uh, like I said, this is going to be the video to just blow your minds. Hang on one sec. Okay, so let me see. For those of y'all that have been around a while, you may remember this picture. This is the this is a transmutation circle. And in the middle of a transmutation circle is a five pointed star. That's what the Statue of Liberty sits on. So the Statue of Liberty sits on top of a hindecogram. A hindecogram is a five uh eleven pointed star. I'm sorry, eleven pointed star. Right here. Here you go. The number eleven is represented in an eleven pointed star that the Statue of Liberty sits on. Called a hindecogram, and it represents the Kelepot. This literally means peel, shell, or hus of the tree of the knowledge. The tree of knowledge. Now we know that the Bible neither shall you touch the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, right? We all know that. And the Kelepot is represented by an 11-pointed star. 
Now watch, so pay attention. So the number 11 is represented by the 11 pointed star that the Statue of Liberty sits on. See, the Statue of Liberty is a big statue that the serpent race made to represent we are ruled, the female mother goddess is ruling over that which it's standing on, which, in a, which is an 11 pointed star, which is a shell, which is our host body. So the Statue of Liberty, she's standing on top of a kelepot, which is a host body represented by an 11 pointed star. And she's holding a penis in her hand with a flame and it also has a scorpion stinger and it's a penis and then she has a spiral staircase DNA coming all the way down to the kelepot which is the host body and she's standing with the twin towers on her side view representing she's she's ruling over the twin system everything that was built uh, the twin towers and the Statue of Liberty all in conjunction with each other represent their system and I can show it to you. So this literally, so the kelepot literally means peel, shell, or husk of the tree of knowledge. In Jewish Kabbalistic cosmology, the kelepot are metaphorical shells, host bodies, surrounding holiness. They are spiritual obstacles. Okay, what are spiritual obstacles? Your shell, your host body. Your host body are spiritual obstacles receiving their existence from God only in an external rather than internal manner. Isis is not only holds the light above humanity, they're talking about the goddess herself with the, the torch. Isis not only holds the light above humanity, but she is also the goddess of duality twins who represents evil or impure spiritual forces. Okay, that's talking about the 11 pointed star that the Statue of Liberty sits on. And let me show you what a kelepot is. Here's a kelepot. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read it to you, right? I'm going to show you this. Housing the essence of holiness, a, a kelepot, peel, shell, or husk. See, it's an 11 point of star, and at the where the 12 would be on a clock right here, there's one, two points. See the one, and the, the point here makes a W. Okay, but as you, if you go this way, and from here you go this way, the two become one right here in the middle. See here? So the 2x right here, this x and this x, this is really Hebrew, but I'm going to call it an x right here. When you go from here this direction, and you go from here this direction, these two become one. That was their goal. Taking the two, the angel and the demon, and then they become one. That's why they destroyed the Twin Towers and put the One World Freedom Tower in their place because the two have become one. Let me just show you some of their symbology. This is what I have to do for you. I have to I have to put this whole thing together in order so you guys can see it. See, there's the Statue of Liberty standing from a side view with the Twin Towers representing the queen that rules over the twin system, and she's standing on top of an 11-pointed star, which is a hindecogram. Let me see right here. There it is. See, right here. So she's standing on top of the host body. She rules over the host body. That's what the Statue of Liberty really means because the, the angels were willing to take their liberties with the daughters of men. The Statue of Liberty. You know what the word liberty is? Eleuthera. Same name as my wife. Eleutheria. Yep. Licentious freedom. The Statue of Licentious Freedom. Do you know how unbelievable my life is? My life is so insane. So what they did was, their methodology was this. They took an angel right here. And this is called a trans... So this is what's in the middle of a kelepot right here. Look. Right here. You have the right side up triangle and the upside down triangle. What's in the middle? A five-pointed star. And when you turn the five-pointed star upside down, what was an angel, see this represents an angel, head, arm, arm, leg, leg. When you turn that upside down, it becomes the Church of Satan. And they run the whole world. So here you go. 
So there's the Star of Satan, the Mindy's Goat, right here. I mean, it's all the same right here, um, right here, right there. That is all the same. Let's see if I'll slide this over real quick. Let me slide this all the way over here. I'm going to go over just a little bit of this tonight, just so you guys can see it. So I'll take the Star of Satan and I'll shove it up in this folder. And so, see, their goal was to take an angel right here and turn that angel upside down. And you turn the angel upside down and it turns into the Church of Satan. So the synagogue of Satan. By trapping the angel in the twin system, and that's why the Statue of Liberty stands on top of an 11-pointed star. The goal was to take a star and transmute it. A star is one of God's angels. That's why in Daniel, in Daniel, by the way, this is unsearchable. This is not, you cannot find this out. This has to be delivered by the Lord God. In Daniel, it says, and at the time of the end, and they that be wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament, firmament and they that turn many to righteousness to make right to cleanse to clear to justify shall be as the stars forever look star as round or shining a prince see the stars just because it says a star it means in the sense of blazing because we are light beings i told you so when we get converted we become what we are, but we're trapped inside the kelepot still. Only when our body dies do we get to our final inheritance. We're light beings, I told you. Today the Lord God proved it. All of it. Everything I'm showing you was proven today. All of it. So anyway, I need to put all this together for you. The Statue of Liberty, the kelepot. I need to show you the insect thing again. Here's what happens when you... You know, you put an angel in chains, you turn him upside down, he becomes a bug. He proved all of it today. All of it. <laughs> today. I was like, Rrr. and I thought I was just going to skydive into some location at Kill Devil Hills with a parachute that said V for Vengeance. Oh, it's way bigger than that. <laughs> I've already done that. I've already done that. So now, today was, wow. Okay, now anyway. Without going off too long, I just, I'm, I'm still trying to process everything that's happened. I mean, I'm still trying to process it. I'm going to spend today or tonight and tomorrow getting it ready. I'll deliver it. And then I'm already out of here on to the next location. So, all glory to God. All right. Those of y'all that stepped up to help, man, thank y'all so much. We are, we are looking so just good right now. Thank you so much. And uh, I'll, I'll be working on all this diligently, diligently, because I want to show you the punchline. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> y'all are going to be like, <gasps> you're going to hold your arms in the air and you're just going to be praising God. I guarantee it. Anyway, all glory to God. All right, guys, I love you. I don't have my bear with me. I'm going to have to find a bear for the trip. Um, you know what? Let's get a hug going no matter what. All right. What, what have I told you? His purpose was to make one new man from the two. That's the reason Jesus, why do you think he was crucified between two different guys? Can't you imagine? Why would that not be so significant? I mean, Jesus took the place. Listen, 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 listen. Do you understand that Jesus was in a Roman prison on Passover? Passover is the holiday that Jews, the Jews celebrate. It's the holiday the Jews celebrate when the angel of death passed over them before they left Egypt. So we're getting ready to leave, guys. I guarantee it. Now, they put blood on the doorpost and blood on the lintel. So it made the same symbol that's on my house. I have three red head symbols on my house in the same orientation 
is the cross of Christ. So let me show you what the head symbol is. So on Passover, right here, right here on Passover, they put the blood of the lamb on their doorposts here, here, and on the lintel right here. That's called the head symbol. It's number eight in the Jewish al alphabet. Het is the number eight, alphanumeric. That, that right there is my house right here. That's a head symbol. Let me show you something. There's three head symbols on my house that are in the same exact orientation as the cross of Christ. Watch. So here is the house right here. So there's one, two, three. Het, het, het. This, so here's the crosses of Calvary. Look right here and then look right here. One, two, three. One, two, three. Het, het, het. Het, het, het. Okay. Het, het, het is 888. 888 in the Bible is Jesus, the salvation of God. Is written on my house in Hebrew by some strange coincidence with three red clay bricks. Are you joking? Even my house is a miracle. It was a house that was, anyway, I won't get into the whole story, but it wasn't a house I went and sought out to buy. To buy, It was my dad trying to pay me back for a whole lot of money he stole from me. He tried to give me a house that was just totally dilapidated. Like here, now we're even. And I, I ended up with it. And I was like, okay, whatever. And it ended up being one of the greatest gifts I could ever get. Okay, so anyway, all these miracles that have happened... They need to be consolidated and they need to be delivered to you guys. So you can understand my ministry has been, when I say my ministry, I mean the ministry that the Lord God entrusted to me. He entrusted it to me. It's not my ministry. It's his ministry that he allowed me to participate in. But it all speaks volumes of the Lord God and his orchestration and all of it. Even from the place I live, all of it. It's insane. It's literally insane. So now I've come to the moment where I can prove it's all true. And I mean, I've been able to do that anyway, but now it's all been ratified even by last night's title on the video. I have arrived at my destination. After 20 years, I can say, I told you so guaranteed now watch Jesus was crucified in between two different guys who was Jesus he's the son of the father Jesus is Emmanuel with us is El so the only son that was ever born in this earth of the father that's why John three sixteen says the only begotten son of God watch watch this John 3.16, watch. John 3. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten. Look at the word begotten, look. Only born, the only soul, only. Okay, mono gene, look. Mono means one. And you know what a gene is like? Genes, like we're made up of genes. Not blue genes, but genes. Think of that. That proves that we're the serpent race. The only one ever born was Jesus. Only one of that gene pool. Mono gene. The only born son of God was Jesus. Yeah, it's hard to believe, isn't it? Yes. Okay. Who was Jesus? He was the son of the father, right? He was El, the almighty God. He was the spirit of the almighty God in a host body. All God, but also man. All God, but in a flesh body. Wow. And he laid aside his power in order to save you, in order to save me. Now imagine when he was crucified. Watch this. And two, let's see, two others lay bound with, 
I believe that's the okay mark 15 uh mark 15 7 let's check out mark 15 7 ready mark 15 and there was one named barabbas which lay bound this is so profound which lay bound think of like the the yoke two bound together there were two that lay bound with barabbas there was, there was one named Barabbas which lay bound with them that had made insurrection with him and who had committed murder in the insurrection. Look at the name Barabbas, son of Abba. Right there, look at that. Bar, bar means son of, watch. Bar, B-A-R means son of Abbas. Son of, look, son of Abba. Can you imagine that the real son of Abba, the real son of Abba, Jesus, ended up on a cross that was made for a guy named son of Abba? What? Like his evil mirror reflection? Are you kidding? Wait a minute. The bar, bar means son of Abba is a what we call our father in heaven abba daddy abba father the guy who jesus took the cross for is named bar abba that's because it represents you and me we're barabbas we're son of the fathers and when he when when he takes the cross that cross becomes personal for you because you're a son of the father and you were you were bound with a superhuman angel demon. That's why there's one on each side. He's got to make the good you. Look, he's got to reach out to the good you. And he's got to reach out to the bad you. And bring them both together in Christ to get your vertical relationship back. Do you all know what's been delivered here right now? Do you all understand what I'm delivering right now? Do you really understand what's being delivered to you? Bar Abbas, son of Abba, the only born son of God, took the cross for son of the Father. So when you accept Christ as your Savior, you get set free the same as Barabbas got set free of his penalty, which was death. So Barabbas got his sentence commuted because Jesus took the cross for him. Son of the Father got his sentence commuted because the real son of the father took it. And when we allow Christ to take our punishment for us by asking for forgiveness, we become Barabbas, son of the father. Try not to burst out in tears. Try not to burst down in tears. <laughs> the greatest mystery has ever been solved is solved. <laughs> it's completely solved. There's a superhuman angel demon running over all of us that got trapped. And when we reach out and we admit our own guilt like the guy on the cross and we say, Jesus doesn't deserve this punishment, but I do. I'm guilty. I deserve my punishment. Then he says, today you'll be with me in paradise. Because <laughs> you admitted your guilt. And then we become the one that gets set free, same as Barabbas. Do you get it? <laughs> all glory to God. And he proved it all today. Uh, of course, look at what I'm showing you right now in the scriptures. We're set free. And if the sun sets you free, you're free indeed.
Amen. Okay. I love you guys. It doesn't get any better than this. It doesn't. I'm going to deliver a video that's going to blow your mind. So <laughs> you're going to be like, <laughs> oh, yeah. Today was the miracles today and the supernatural thing that took place of what I, you know, I thought I was going to be skydiving into Kill Devil Hills as a witness against them with a big V for vengeance above them. It was even better than that. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> all right, guys. I love you in Christ. Can you believe it? Can y'all believe it? Bar Abbas, the only begotten son of the father. The only one that was ever born, he gave his only born son into this system for all of us. So us rebels could be set free off the cross that was meant for us. We're all Barabbas. We all are a Barabbas. And we get set free as soon as we accept Christ. Then he takes the cross for each one of us personally. What a loving father. Try not to cry. What a loving father. Talk about a father that loves you. Don't worry about who loves you in this world. He's in this world and he loves you. Guaranteed. Say it. His purpose was to make one new man from the two, thus making peace. Peace and grace. I love you guys. Thank you for the greatest honor of my life, uh, getting to minister to you and to bring these this truth that the Lord God's communicated to you. Thank you so much for letting me into your house and into your hearts that I could share this. And uh, I've tried to do the best I can. Sorry, I know I'm a little crusty sometimes, but just that's the way he made me. So tough. No. <laughs> okay, I love you guys. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow. I'm going to work on all this stuff and try and get it all nice and deliverable. And just we'll freak out together tomorrow, okay? All right, God bless.